Now, when you're preaching and you're giving revelation, oftentimes to make it even more aware to the people as to what the writer is saying, we give illustration. You begin to give windows so people can view in to get a better handle of the message. And oftentimes your people will leave knowing more about the illustration than the revelation. But then one of the things we preachers like to do, and I had one professor to debate whether this is needed. I do a good deal of it. But it's application. Someone says if you give the revelation, God will make the application. I certainly concur with that sentiment, but sometimes for some of our people that are not as deep in the Word, haven't known the Lord that long, I believe it really helps to give applications. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk about the revelation of the tongue. We're going to move in and see two beautiful, biblical, simple illustrations. And then we're going to close this message by making application. In the Scriptures, the tongue is variously described. Listen to the words that are used in your Bible to describe my tongue, wicked, deceitful, perverse, filthy, corrupt, flattering, slanderous, gossiping, blasphemous, foolish, boasting, complaining, cursing, contentious, sensual, and vile. And then James makes this statement, and it's emphatic, and it includes everyone. He says, we all stumble. That's the word that can translate sin. It's a word that translates in chapter 2 and verse 10, the word offend. It's a present tense verb, which means it's a repeated action. It refers to a moral lapse, a failure to do what's right. But it is not a fatal fall. Solomon said that a good man will fall seven times and he'll get up again. James has moved quickly from dealing with the ministry of the tongue in James chapter 3 and verse 1, and now he's going to talk to us about the misuse of the tongue. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Think about that. As a gospel minister, as a Christian, God can use my tongue to give someone words that'll get them off the road to hell and on the road to heaven. There's life in the tongue, but there's also death in the tongue. We can speak condemnation. We can speak in such a way that we turn people off and they'd say, if that's a Christian, I don't want to be one, and they'll stumble into hell over our stumbling with our tongue, the power of the tongue. Don't ever underestimate the significance of the tongue. You just sang songs. Your tongues gave us words that edified the church. People were celebrating. Some were standing while you were singing. The power of the tongue. You can say, she's got a great voice, but the truth is, without a tongue, there is no voice to be delivered. James talks about the teacher's responsibility in verse 1, then quickly moves to the teacher's accountability in verse 2 and following. Since the tongue is the teacher's tool, 